Hello, hello everyone. Happy Wednesday. I'm coming in here for my weekly live video and really excited to share a little bit more on this topic today. So if you <clears throat> didn't see some of my posts last week, I was um, talking about how I had been researching over the last um, few weeks and months and have come to the conclusion that I don't necessarily need to cook in cast iron anymore. That was the whole um, reason why this topic got brought up. So I'll give you a little um, recap here. But I posted a, a pan that I was getting and it was on sale. And so I wanted to share it with, with you guys and it, it brought up some questions. So I wanted to go a little bit deeper into um, giving you the big picture about how iron works in your body and why even if a test were to tell you that your iron was low, a lot of times we get blood tests and it tells us that our iron is low. And so we feel like we need to get all the iron from all the different you know, places, whether that be a supplement form or we're trying to eat more iron rich foods or we're going to cook in cast iron. Like there's a lot of different reasons and like, you know, uh, sorry, not reasons, avenues that we can be getting extra iron. So I wanted to kind of dive into why you might not need extra iron, even though it might show low on your blood test or something like that, and, and how this process works. So I, I um, went into a little bit of it last week, but wanted to give you a better overview. So if you do have low iron that you, you know, your doctor has told you, you know, you need to be on an iron supplement, um, maybe, you know, you've taken it upon yourself to to um, eat more iron rich foods or even cooking cast iron and um, full transparency i have been cooking cast iron for primarily really i use it um, most every day to cook a lot of different things because um, i always thought it was the best option and let me just say that it is definitely a better option than cooking with you know uh, a non-stick pan that has a ton of chemicals in it okay <laughs> so i'm not necessarily saying that it's terrible to cook in cast iron but I just want to give you some thoughts and some more um, knowledge on how iron works in your body and how maybe you don't need um, extra iron. That's really um, what I want to focus on today. And I'm going to answer some questions that I got about the pan that I was sharing and, and different things such as that. So if you do have a question, you can drop it in the comments and I will definitely try to answer that while we're on here live. Okay. So, um, low iron would automatically, on a blood test, let's say, would automatically think, you know, uh, trigger us to think we need more iron in form of a supplement, foods, different things like that. But um, I want to kind of explain to you how um, low iron might not necessarily mean that you need more iron. It might just mean that it's not working properly in your body. The iron that you have is not working properly. And if you think about it, we really already get a lot of iron from things that we eat. Most all processed foods have are iron fortified. If you were to look on the box, they have iron in them. There's a lot of iron rich foods that we consume on a daily basis, like meat or seafood, or like there's several vegetables that have a lot of iron, like spinach, sweet potatoes, broccoli, beans, um, potato products. So there's just a lot of different things um, that we're probably consuming that are giving us enough iron. And you also, you know, want to think, well, how's our body getting rid of iron? Really, the only way that our body gets rid of iron is through blood loss. And so, women, we have our monthly cycles. Um, that's really the only way that we're getting rid of, you know, iron. And so, it's not necessarily um, a low value on a test isn't necessarily triggering for more iron. It really means that you want to make your iron work better. So, what do I mean by that? Um, we have, you know, when we have extra iron in our body that's not working, let me start there. It can sequester in our tissues and our organs and in our gut, and that actually can feed infection. It can make it so that you're just, the inflammation in your body is just more, um, it, it's, it's more constant, which we don't want, right? It feeds inflammation. Um, the, the estrogen symptoms that we might be feeling, like PMS type symptoms, just our hormones being off, um, it can can um, propitiate that and then it can just make it really difficult to balance your hormones in general um, so you don't just want it hanging around right so why is it not working so here's the long and short answer um, iron doesn't act alone and what I mean by that is without copper 
our iron becomes stuck. It becomes stagnant. It doesn't work. Like we want it to be moving. We want it to be mobile. And if it's not working, um, it's going to be causing some of these issues. Um, and so both conventional and sometimes functional medicine focuses solely on the iron status, as I mentioned, um, with like a blood test per se. But, you know, and sometimes they might, they might even look at the ferritin level. Have you ever been told, well, your iron and your ferritin are low, so you really need extra iron. Um, but the thing that they rarely consider in most conventional practices is that it's more complex than just measuring iron. So if we look beyond just the iron status um, and we start to address other nutrients like copper, our iron imbalances a lot of times disappear. And so let's dig in a little bit more to this. Um, what is the iron recycling system? This is what I mean by your iron needs to be in constant motion. It is a, con it is a recycling system that is there for a reason, right? Um, so let me explain a little bit about this. So we all have an iron recycling system that helps our bodies produce um, iron every 24 hours. And so our bone marrow is part of this. Um, it actually uses iron to make more red blood cells. And <clears throat> the red blood cells are alive for approximately 120 days. Stick with me. We're, we're getting somewhere here. I want you to understand this. And then they are broken down and the process is repeated. So like this process is always going on making new red blood cells. And so the key component to this process, or one of the key components, is something called ceruloplasm. And this is regulated by copper and vitamin A. And the ceruloplasm helps the iron be active in your body. It helps it do the jobs that it needs to do. <clears throat> and so when copper and vitamin A are inadequate, so is ceruloplasm. And so that affects this whole iron recycling system. Basically, your iron is stagnant, you're not getting good use of it, and it can cause those problems that I was mentioning um, when it gets stuck in tissues and in your gut and things like that. So, um, we don't want those things to be happening. So, how can we help this iron recycling system out? So, as I mentioned, you need something called ceruloplasm to make your iron work. And you get that from copper and from vitamin A. And so, this is the part for me that um, kind of blew my mind. Like vitamin A is really the active form of vitamin A is kind of um, the missing piece for a lot of people, I feel. And um, vitamin A is not something you can get from a whole lot of sources, the active form. I'm not talking about just taking a vitamin A supplement. You need the active form to make this whole recycling system work. And so I really was not, I'm just thinking about me personally, I was not getting a lot of this, and this might be a whole other conversation, but the, um, the a really, really great and really probably the best place to get active vitamin A is dairy. And I have personally been, have been previously dairy free for probably five or six, seven years. I don't know. It's been a while because I thought it was the root cause to some of my digestive issues. So I was like, I'm going to get rid of all dairy. And so... I did. But what I didn't realize was I was also getting rid of a lot of great nutrients from my body. And so raw dairy is one of the best forms of active vitamin A. So if you can get raw dairy, I would highly recommend that. That would be raw cheese, raw milk. Um, and you can search on the internet to try to see where it might be in your area. But most of the time it's a farmer's market. But that's one really great place to get um, active vitamin A. Another place is beef liver. Um, that's not something that most people consume on a daily basis. I surely wasn't, but trying to get more of that in. Um, you know, you can get some from shellfish. You can get some from bee pollen, royal jelly, um, cod liver oil. There are other places that you can get this, but like I really wasn't consuming much of, much of this at all. And so this really impairs the whole system if you're not getting this active form of vitamin A. So. Um, I just wanted to explain to you how all of this works and hopefully help you to see, well, you know, maybe I don't just need, you know, maybe, maybe you're on an iron supplement. Maybe you're, you're trying to do all these things to boost your iron, but really you need to think about how can you make your iron work better. Like I said, it's hard to know exactly, you know, if you were to ask me, hey, what do I need to do? It's hard to know without testing. And by testing, I don't mean a blood test. I mean a hair test. A hair test tells you what is in your tissues, not in your blood, which that's very important when you think about vitamins because you want to get um, an accurate measurement 
more than just a snapshot, first of all, because a hair test is going to give you three months of data versus a snapshot of what's going on. But a lot of the vitamins and minerals are best um, measured in hair and not blood because they're in the cell. So that's one thing that, you know, I feel like if, if you're struggling with some of these things or if you just, you want to be proactive, um, look at getting a hair test because it's a pretty inexpensive test and it's something that is included in all of my group, um, all of my, all of my packages, which will be group and one-on-one -on -one or, or what I currently offer now. And so that's something that I feel is very important, not only just for iron, I know that's what we're talking about today, but also for all of um, you know, your vitamin and mineral status, which can really affect a lot, especially for women. Our, our minerals and vitamins tend to get off really easily because our body's very sensitive to stress. So that's just something that um, I like to do while we're working on other things is to just help you to rebalance your minerals, which is going to not only help with some of these symptoms, but it's also going to aid in other, you know, healing that you're going to be doing. So it makes sense for me to do it together. So, um, that's kind of the personalized version. Here's the DIY version for you. <laughs> if you want to just try a few things to, you know, aid your body in this recycling system and to help your body get rid of some of the iron that it has, maybe the problem is you don't really know necessarily if you have excess iron, but I think it's always a good thing to support our body in ridding itself of extra iron if you do have an overload or just helping it to work better. So limiting iron fortified foods. Um, Limit cooking in cast iron, like, this was one of the questions I got. Is it okay to cook in cast iron occasionally? I'm not saying you should throw away all your cast iron pans, okay? I'm just saying it might be, you know, a good thing to think about using other types of pans. So, um, cooking in it once or twice a week, you know, is that going to be that big of a deal? I really don't know because I'm not sure what your status is right now, but, uh, you know, I, I don't think it's the worst thing that you can do, but... You know, uh, cooking in something like a stainless steel pan is, is um, I'm going to try to cook in those a little bit more. And I also did purchase a pan that is um, has a non-stick coating, and it's aluminum and has that non-stick coating that's non-toxic. So it just really depends on what you're trying to cook as to what pan you might want to use. But these are just some things to think about. Um, mega dosing on iron supplements. If you're currently doing that, you might want to, you know, step back from that. And also utilizing castor oil packs can help your body um, get rid of some of the extra iron because the quercetin in castor oil is actually a chelator. So I know you've, if you've been following me, should assume, um, I have talked about um, castor oil packs before and um, maybe I'll try to share um, something I've done before so that you can look into those if you haven't already. But um, I, I do utilize those at least three or four times a week, but you can use them daily. Um, when, if, you, if you are not pregnant and if you are not menstruating, if you're not on your cycle, you can use those every day. But if you are pregnant or on your cycle, it's best not to use them during those times. So that's one step that you can take. The other step is just get more copper and the active vitamin A in your diet. So things like beef liver, shellfish, um, bee pollen, royal jelly, cacao, cod liver oil, chlorophyll, um, raw dairy, cheese, eggs, those are all good forms of the active vitamin A, and some of those also have copper as well. So, um, let me know uh, what questions you have, and hopefully, uh, you know, I answered all of those for you that, that I had up until this point, but um, if this sparks a question, I would love to, to help you if I can. And um, also, one more thing that I wanted to mention before I hop off, um, I have a webinar that I'm doing tomorrow, and this is a, a way that I can show you the bigger picture of um, how you can really filter all of this health advice that you get um, that can often be confusing, how you can filter it through one lens to really get to the real root of whatever's going on so you can finally get your health back, start moving in the right direction, get rid of some of these symptoms that have really been weighing you down. And so that is going to be tomorrow night, um, Thursday at 7.30 p.m. Eastern. And you can go to my website, carriecootie.com forward slash webinar to register for that. And I would love it if you would join me. It's absolutely free. So I will put the link below in this Facebook um, post or video and I'll put it on my Instagram stories so you guys can access that easily but hope you have a great rest of your day thanks for joining me and I'll see you guys later